get comfortable because we're gonna have a discussion about self-love, what it means to love yourself, how you can love yourself, the way self-love is talked about in pop culture, just all things self-love. I have a lot of issues with the way self-love is talked about in social media and pop culture today. I feel like it's transcended its original definition. It's almost become girl bossified and just like saturated with toxic positivity. And it's understandable for the definition to change after like this concept was introduced into a very capitalist culture. But a lot of the self-love like content that I consume has just left me feeling more shitty about myself. It almost feels like another task on my to-do list, another chore that I need to complete before the time runs out. And I think that that's so far from the original objective of self-love. There's this expectation to consistently feel 100% content and 100% like good about ourselves and I think that is so unrealistic and so impractical. It's also not something that I think you can like achieve or receive once you cross the finish line. It, it doesn't really work that way. I think of love as a process, a journey, a long-term commitment rather than, you know, congratulations, you did a face mask, here's a here's self-love. Like, I, it doesn't work that way. And I think that's a very transactional way to view self-love. I think a lot of people think self-love follows this linear path, but that could not be farther from the truth. You're gonna go up, you're gonna go down, you're gonna go left, you're gonna go right. You're not always gonna be moving forward. And that's also where I think we feel really shitty because we think we should be always moving forward, but that's again, not life. The fact that self-love is promoted as this like constant attitude that we should hold up, I think, invalidates a lot of our emotions when the whole idea of self-love i think is to be accepting of those emotions we live with fear and guilt and shame and regret and these are completely normal emotions and, and it's okay to feel them i don't even know why it's so taboo or why it's so frowned upon to admit that we have those emotions. I don't even like calling them negative emotions because I think that just like categorizes them and just makes it super black and white. Like here's positive, here's negative. But it's like, I don't want to build this like stigma around fear and guilt and shame and regret and pain and anger. Like they're very normal to have. There's this like pressure to rise above those emotions. And if you can't, then you know, you're the one to blame. And so I just end up feeling like inadequate and incompetent for not knowing how to rise above these things that I, you know, should have under control. And I think the reason why a lot of these like self-love, you know, tips and tricks don't really work is because they're quick and simple solutions to the symptoms of the problem. But it's like, if your wound is infected, putting on a bandaid, sure, it'll relieve you for like one or two days, short term, yeah. But like in the long run, it's not really gonna fix your infection. Like you need antibiotics go to the doctor, <laughs> go to therapy. <laughs> no, um, I know therapy isn't accessible to everyone. That's why like, I just want to share the research that I've done on my own time about these things. So the real toxicity in my head happens when you're already feeling down and then you're trying to force these like loving thoughts when you so clearly don't feel that way. I don't need to feel bad about the fact that I feel bad. I think in order to move towards a healthier approach to self-love, we kind of need to unlearn everything that we've learned about it. What we all so desperately need is for negative emotions to be validated. We actually want our negative emotions to be acknowledged, understood, and accepted rather than suppressed, avoided, and tucked away in a corner where no one can see. We want someone to validate the shitty situations we go through. And I think the first and most important person to validate those emotions is going to be you. To be able to say to yourself that it's okay to not be 100% all the time is so, so important. And it's also so powerful because it builds so much self-trust. If you need any proof that it's okay to have these negative emotions, if you need any validation, let mother nature provide it because you need shit to grow a garden. It's okay to have your negative emotions because that's what's gonna grow your person and yourself and your character. And for a really long time, I thought of self-love as a game that had levels. Prior to my depression last year, I thought I had a pretty good relationship with myself. I was working really hard to build that strong relationship with myself. And at the time I was very content with my life, with myself. So I was like, okay, like we're doing good. Little did I know I was practicing a defense mechanism called intellectualization. 
If you're familiar with the term, I am sorry. <laughs> Intellectualization is when you rationalize your emotions rather than feeling them. You try to find reasons as to why you're feeling them instead of actually just sitting with the emotions and like experiencing them. You can't numb yourself to a single emotion, by the way. If you're numbing yourself to one emotion, you're numbing yourself to all. So although I thought I was happy, it really was just me being numb. And when I got depressed, I was absolutely crushed. Like I was so overwhelmed with these unfamiliar emotions. I didn't know what to do with them. I didn't even know what they were. I was just like, what is going on? Like I was so stuck and it took me a minute to understand that I was depressed because I was so unfamiliar with my emotions. It literally felt like I had transported into a new dimension and I was like a different version of myself. And I was like, what is going on? Like who, who is this? Like where, where did we enter? And so I got depressed and I really was like, fuck all of the progress that I had made all the work that I had been putting into like nurturing my relationship with myself just went to waste. It all crumbled and I had to start from level one and it was so, so devastating and I was so burnt out that I didn't even want to begin working on myself again. I didn't even want to get out of my depression because it just felt like too much work. It was like I had to reclimb this mountain that like I thought I was at the peak of. So I was like, do, do I do this all over again? Like. I can't do it. Like, I don't think I'm capable of doing that all over again. It just felt like too much. It wasn't until I started therapy that I realized all progress isn't lost. It's not really game over. You don't necessarily have to start from scratch every time something falls apart because you still very much have, you know, those tools and you still very much have your self and your identity. And I didn't know that and I didn't realize that and it took me a minute to tap into that. But once I did, my view on my depression kind of shifted from like this incredibly difficult like obstacle that I had to get through to an exercise that I could almost use to my advantage, kind of like a practice round to apply all the self-love skills and tools that I had learned. And through that shift, it kind of felt like I was reclaiming my power over my depression where I wasn't letting it win anymore. And I kind of was like, okay, I can take this on because I know I can get through it. Now that I know that I can trust myself to get out of it, I don't really fear it anymore. There's always gonna be some negative event that happens that's going to impact you either directly or indirectly. We just have to deal with it. Like that's just how life is. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the self-love products out there in the market. I don't think they hit the spot. However, this poetry book by Melody Godfred Melody, she did something with this one. I actually sat down and read this entire poetry book in one sitting because it was just really good. It was short and sweet and it made me feel really amazing after. There's one specific quote. I already have it memorized because I've been repeating it to my friends every single fucking day. It goes, I finally found my rhythm when I realized that even the steps backwards were part of the dance. It really, it really hits. You're like, damn, okay. Like, She's saying something. In the Stutz documentary with Jonah Hill and his therapist, I really liked how he mentioned that there's always going to be uncertainty, pain, and constant work in the world. These are three variables that you cannot get rid of, and it doesn't matter what your social standing is, who you are, these three variables are going to affect everyone. Once you're aware and trust, keyword trust, that all progress isn't lost when you know shit goes south, it becomes much easier to confront the challenges in your life and to confront that like negative event that happens to you. It's just a matter of how aware are you that these tools exist within yourself and how do you plan on nurturing and utilizing these tools when shit goes south. Now that we've kind of unlearned all the toxic bullshit, I really wanna talk about the difference between loving yourself and loving being yourself. I think they're entirely different concepts and I think the best way that I can explain it is through a growth and a fixed mindset. We as humans tend to subscribe to a very fixed version of ourselves. You know, we have these traits, these qualities, these types, and that's it. And that's mainly because we don't like the unknown. We like to have everything figured out, especially about ourselves. We don't like question marks. We want answers. In doing that, we kind of force ourselves to live within like these confined parameters of our self-concept. And consequently that like 
kind of puts a damper on how much love we can give ourselves. Having this fixed mindset doesn't give much leeway to your human. Remember, we're human beings. We're a species who are evolving every single fucking second. Every day we wake up slightly different from yesterday. Like our bodies are growing, we're building new neural pathways, our mindsets are shifting, especially if you're like me in your like early 20s or like late teens. Like we are going through so much change. And so kind of having this like fixed mindset, this fixed version of who you are is just like, okay, that's just limiting your potential and like how much you can change and grow. That's where I think loving yourself and loving being yourself differ because when you love being yourself, you allow yourself the space and time to grow and change and adapt. You view yourself as this very fluid and flexible being that exhibits several different emotions and attitudes throughout the day. And I really appreciate how having this growth mindset really celebrates our wide range of human emotions, not just the good ones. A lot of the self-love talks that I hear only shows recognition towards those positive emotions. and that's just like completely neglecting our complex nature and just like completely neglecting half of our existence. And I'm just like, okay, but what about the rest of me? Like, you don't like her? Like, what about her? She's also me. Another quote from my self-love poetry book. The true learning has been not just to love myself, but to like myself, to enjoy myself in the mundane moments, not just the sacred ones. She really captures that whole idea that I just explained in like three sentences. <laughs> Ultimately, as a group, we need to shift our attention and focus more towards self-awareness and acceptance rather than these like harmful, toxic, positive thoughts that aren't really getting us anywhere. In my head, self-love is built of four main pillars. There's self-awareness, there's self-worth, self-esteem, and self-care. Self-awareness would be like mindfulness towards your triggers, your thought patterns, your self-belief, your trauma. Your self-worth is the value you ascribe yourself, how you value yourself. Your self-esteem is a product of your self-worth. And then self-care is maintenance. So I want to start from self-worth because I think that's where the magic begins. For a really long time, I was stuck on the question of, okay, I want to love myself. How do I do it? Like, tell me how to do it and I'll do it. I'm ready to do it. Just tell me what to do. How do I begin? Where, where do I start? My therapist told me about this exercise called the I am statements. These are basically affirmational phrases that you write down and you can go about it in any way you want, whether you write down one a day or you write down like 20 in one sitting and you repeat them to yourself. Whichever approach you want to take, try to write down just a couple I am statements. And these can be, you know, identifying statements as in like, I'm a girl, I'm a student, I'm Turkish or they can be quality statements, which is more like, I am pretty, I am funny, I am smart, you know, whatever. The point of this exercise is to build your self-concept, how you think of yourself. And the reason why it works is because it engages with your subconscious. We don't know much about our subconscious because we can't really access it like consciously. We know it's there and we know that it's like a sponge, especially if you're in your early 20s, like, your subconscious right now is going to absorb any and every content you put in front of it. This is why people will be like, be mindful of who you surround yourself with or what kind of you know content you consume on social media. Because even if consciously you may not identify with something, your subconscious is still going to absorb that information. In your brain, the more often you repeat an exercise, the stronger those neural pathways are gonna become. The more established neural pathways in your brain are much easier to access than ones that you've you know, only fired a couple times. And so the reason why I really encourage you to repeat these affirmational phrases, these I am statements to yourself, you know, at least once a day is so you keep firing those neurons and that path is getting stronger and stronger. That's why people say fake it till you make it and it actually works because you're basically convincing your subconscious that you do have confidence until you actually achieve it because you've just believed in yourself so much. Essentially what we're doing is rewiring your negative thought patterns into positive and healthy ones. And so we're kind of eliminating that self-defeating talk that like your inner critic will tell you. This also really helps to build self-trust because the more these I am statements are ingrained in your mind, the less external validation you're gonna seek. I used to be someone who was obsessed with figuring out how people perceive me. Like I would ask my friends to explain 
how they view me in very, very explicit detail. Cause I just wanted to know, I was like, I want to know. I'm so curious. Like, who do you see me as? What do I look like to you? Like I had just very little knowledge about myself. Like I had a very weak self concept and that's why we're doing these I am statements so that you can kind of figure out like, who are you? Who am I? Now I want to talk about self-esteem because she's a little tricky one. Like I said, self-esteem is a product of your self-worth. Unfortunately, self-esteem kind of operates also on like a subconscious level and it is kind of developed in early childhood. Not saying that you can't build your self-esteem when you're older. I'm just saying like, that's mainly where your self-esteem is established in early childhood and like developmental years. If you went through a shitty past and you were traumatized, first of all, I'm really sorry. Second of all, that does not mean you're broken. And it does not mean that you have to go and like blame yourself for having a low self-esteem. We tend to look inwards whenever something goes wrong in our life. And we're like, okay, I'm the one to blame. I don't have a high self-esteem because I did this, this, and this, but it's like, it doesn't work that way. You, you can't really control what happens to you when you're a f four years old. I don't want this to discourage you at all. Like you can work on your self-esteem. There's two kinds of self-esteem. There's explicit and implicit. This basically just means your explicit self-esteem is the one you're consciously aware of having, like how you consciously view yourself and your implicit is how you subconsciously view yourself. For a long time, I had insecure high self-esteem and I kind of still struggle with it. Basically, there's a phenomenon called a donut personality where your explicit self-esteem is high. So you consciously have a good view of yourself, but your subconscious, your implicit self-esteem is low. Because I had this like discrepancy, I was kind of conflicted on like, I consciously knew that I, you know, was of high value and I had, you know, a high self-worth, but deep down, I didn't really believe that. And again, like the best way you can engage and interact with your subconscious is through repeating a positive experience multiple times so you can build that neural pathway. Like we're getting down to mother neuroscience over here like at the end of the day you really need to build a strong foundation and that foundation is your subconscious and that's how we're gonna do it like that's how we can get there when my insecure high self-esteem thing was really at its peak i saw this tweet that i really resonated with and it said i love me but i don't love me back and that basically means you're not accepting the love that you're giving yourself. This is also going to make it much harder for you to recognize when other people are giving you love if you're not accepting the love that you give yourself in the first place. So this is, again, where we go back to rewiring our negative thought patterns. And this is where mindfulness comes in. Self-awareness is mindfulness towards your thought patterns, your triggers, your trauma, basically just becoming aware, <laughs> just becoming aware without necessarily attaching to your observation. What I like to do is split my inner dialogue into two. Well, technically into three different entities. Only two of them have voices though. There's the good cop and then there's the bad cop. The good cop, obviously she's super compassionate. She's kind, she's tolerant, she's patient, understanding, accepting. She's lovely, we love her. And then there's bad cop. She is my inner critic. She's harsh, she's very toxic, she's critical, she's judgmental. She's impatient, she does not understand, she does not accept, she does not empathize. She's a bitch. Self-awareness boils down to identifying which voice is talking. And then there's a third entity, which is my body. This is my physical form. My physical form doesn't have a voice, but she's still there and she's still present in the conversation. She's just placed a few steps behind. I like including the third entity, like my physical form in the equation, because I think it allows me the space and time and, and stage to observe this conversation happening between the good and the bad cop without attaching to them, without wearing them as my own and like adopting them into my personality and my character. Those are kind of my two cents on the topic of self-love. I didn't talk much about the fourth pillar, which is self-care, just because I think that's more action-based, whereas self-awareness, self-worth, and self-esteem are more concepts and like abstract ideas. I would be more than interested in filming like a self-care video, how you can engage with your love languages if you're single and how you can like meet your needs if you are single because I've been single my whole life. So I honestly feel like I'm gonna do that next. <laughs> I am kind of switching my content to more sitting down talking videos. I did the vlogs and I really liked them, but 
I think I kind of want to try something new. This is honestly really exciting to me because I geek out on psychology and like neuroscience. So being able to share my research and like my findings with you guys is going to be very fulfilling for me. And I hope this helps anyone. If there's one person listening and they got one thing out of this video, that's really all I want. And seriously, fucking do your I am statements. That's your homework. Like just do it. I don't want you to do anything else. Just write down 10 things that you are and add one to the list every day. Stay safe and super sexy. Ah! <laughs>